I didn't have much of a sense of anything because I was about six years old when all these events began. There was no sense of being Jewish or no sense of anti-Semitism, anything like that. I only began to sense this when we were actually on our flight to the United States and through various parts of Europe. Then, then I, I, you know, I got the feeling that being Jewish was not a good thing at that particular period of time. I remember the beginning of the war very vividly because what happened was the Germans bombed Antwerp. And so they did it, they started at night, and uh, so the uh, air raid sirens went off, and uh, we all had to go down to the basement, and they bombed repeatedly, so we had to do this several times. I'm told that my father hesitated leaving, probably because he was worried about his parents and uh, what to do with his parents. And, uh, but someone convinced him that uh, he should get out. My father rented a car for a while to get us out of Belgium, then we went on train, our, our escape route went something like this. We went from Belgium through Paris, then to Bordeaux. And then we stayed in Bordeaux for a while, but the French army was sort of retreating and was retreating in the direction of Bordeaux, and they had to use the facilities in Bordeaux uh, to house the French army, and so they didn't want any refugees there, and refugees had to get out of Bordeaux. They split France up, as you know, and you know the occupied part and the non-occupied part. And my parents wanted desperately to get to the unoccupied part. And they finally got a, a French army unit, an Air Force unit, that was going down to Marseille, probably, to try to get over to North Africa uh, to take us along. Some colonel in the French uh, army allowed my, my family to go on, on their trucks. And finally, he got to the uh, line of demarcation between the unoccupied and the occupied zone. He said, OK, I'll have to leave you off here. And then my father wanted to give him something. He wanted to give him a diamond. He was proud. He was a diamond dealer, so and he was carrying diamonds. This man absolutely refused, you know. He said, you know, it's the right thing to do and to just uh, think of my family that's it. that is in the uh, occupied zone and pray for them. We were in France for about a year and a half in southern France. I did go to school there, okay, and I surely remember that very, very keenly. What I remember was that um, terrible anti-Semitism there. It was really painful to go to school every day. Hitler had uh, essentially conquered Western Europe, okay, and he looked like he was the winner. And uh, everybody was trying to get on the bandwagon, especially young children. They knew what was going on, and I was the only Jew in the school, and they wanted to sort of show that they had good Nazi credentials, so to speak, and so they picked on me on a daily basis. I was I had to run through a gauntlet. I was called Saljuif, which means dirty Jew. To this day, I, I remember it as the worst time that I had, where I really felt the anti-Semitism keenly, and I was very glad to get away from that place. Very glad to get away. I certainly had become terrified somewhat. Understood the the threat to our lives. My father, having been born in Poland, was on the Polish quota, which made it very difficult to get visas to the United States. My mother was, was Belgium, and we were all Belgian. That was different. But of course, we all wanted to go together. And you needed influence. If you didn't have influence, you were in bad shape. And I mean, we, there are lots of people who just couldn't get visas simply because they weren't well off or had no influence. My mother's brother, uh, he was working for the Remington Rand Corporation, and he had acquired some influence there, and he knew some people. Even he, oh, we were told that he was earning something like $20,000 at the time. That was not considered enough to sponsor a family. So he had to go and get somebody else, a member of the Gestetner family, which was uh, rather prominent in the uh, machine, office machine business, to uh, sponsor us. It was a relief for my family to get here. My father had been trying to get out of Europe for a long time. And once he decided he wanted to get out, he really wanted to get out, and he shook heaven and earth to get out. We had family who immediately met us when we came to New York and uh, helped us get housing. We lived in a couple of uh, hotels for a while. 
until my father got settled into the diamond business in New York. And I was raised in New York City, basically, and educated there. And uh, I got a PhD at uh, New York University. Nobody called me a dirty shoe, thank God. It was a much freer and much more open society. I mean, I don't want to exaggerate. Now, there were there was some anti-Semitism in New York City. You know, there were neighborhoods. There was a Jewish neighborhood, there was an Irish neighborhood, and there was quite a bit of anti-Semitism. Uh, if you uh, walked into the wrong neighborhood or if the kids from the other neighborhood walked into your neighborhood. But generally speaking, within your Jewish neighborhood, you were, you know, there was nothing going on, nothing to worry about. It was a good, secure feeling. How long did it take you and your family to actually feel at home and to feel very comfortable here in the States? Gee, I can't speak for my parents. Uh, sometimes I have the feeling that they were never comfortable. And uh, they did have the option of going back to uh, Belgium after the Second World War had ended. They claimed they chose not to go back partly on account of uh, the fact that they didn't want to upset the lives of their children. I could understand that one might not want to go back to Europe. I have one uncle who went, went back. He took it upon himself to try to find out which members of our family had survived and where they were. And he found, in fact, two cousins of ours who had been hidden out by Belgian Gentiles. And they had become so close to these kids that they didn't want to give them up. When I came to choose uh, where to send my kids to school, I shopped around very carefully. We were in Nashville, and we knew that uh, there were some schools here where there was some anti-Semitism. There were stories about anti-Semitism. And I picked the school where there was the least amount of anti-Semitism, because I didn't want them to go through the experience that I'd gone through. It would be nice if we had a world where people were, you know, tolerant of each other, and uh, such, such things didn't happen. And, uh, that's a sort of a desirable end, I think, of the kind of world we ought to be aiming for. And 